Holy moly, this is kind of huge. We have the 10.5 anniversary character announcement coming October 26th PSD. And nonetheless, it is another Gold D. Roger as an anniversary exclusive alongside Rayleigh and Gaban. Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stump back from the OPTC video. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at this new character. And stereotypically, I do like a 60 second short on the new characters. But for these big ones, I, I do like to sort of dive in, really break down the character, especially when we get a new mechanic, which this particular character does bring. Very interesting mechanic of Captain uh, Shift, not Captain Swap. Captain Shift. So, very, very interesting what he's bringing. But as you can see, it's basically the entire Roger Pirates in the artwork. We've got Kid Shanks down there, Buggy sitting at the back. We've got Crocus hiding there, Sunbells in the, in the image. But the main three that we're focusing on are Roger, Gaban, and Rayleigh. So, if you guys want to check out all the information, it is over on the One Piece Treasure Cruise X page. That is where we're getting all our information today. A link will be in the description for you guys, so you guys can go check that out. Uh, if you click on this particular page here, I believe it takes you to um, the web page that has basically all of the news. So I'm going to bring this up in Chrome, uh, so that way we can actually break this down a little bit better. All right, so we have the 10.5 anniversary era of the strongest Sugo Fest the beginning of the legend new character abilities and introduction. Now, as mentioned, this is stereotypically a anniversary exclusive banner. Um, we saw KDAD, I believe, two years ago, if I remember correctly. Might have been, yeah, two years ago. And then last year we had the um, Fearsome Foes campaign, which was like Blackbeard, Cross Guild, those types of characters. Actually, was that, no, was that last year or was that the start of this year? I actually can't really remember, to be honest. But stereotypically, we have an anniversary exclusive character that sort of falls in this particular slot. Or maybe it was actually the Film Red Celebration. Maybe it was, yeah, Shanks and Luffy and then the Kobe for the last year. And then Blackbeard, the Fist of Post, was the start of this year. Either or, like, they're, they're usually anniversary exclusives. So I am led to believe that this is a anniversary exclusive. Now, this is a dual character being Roger and then Rayleigh Gaban. So the, the key point here is the character has a new captain switch which will switch captains and use the captain effects and super abilities for various characters throughout the fight. They are a strength and an intelligence slash a free spirit. So they have um, buffed slash, uh, sorry, free uh, strength and they have bluff buffed int. Both of those particular types do need a little bit of help in regular play, especially strength. We haven't had really that many buffs for strength lately, but then they basically just slapped on the two best classes in the game, gave them slasher and free spirit. Like the character's already winning if they are a slasher and free spirit, especially free spirit, but like, yeah, it's just, yeah. The special move at level 6 is the Fierce Onslaught. I believe it goes down to a 15-turn cooldown, if I remember correctly from the image. It deals 1 million damage, just like original Roger, through all defensive effects and normal attacks only. Reduces barriers by 2 turns. This is massive barrier removals. We love barrier removals here. Um, barriers can be very, very annoying to deal with. Also, removing 6 turns of pain, which is awesome. We don't have a lot of pain removers in the game, and the fact that you can just get around 6 turns of this, it's actually really, really nice. Obviously, we have, like, HP guard and all that sort of stuff that can avoid this too, but having a character that can get around it. Triple the attack of strength, int, and slash characters for 3 turns, so a 3 times attack boost that cannot be removed by the enemies or yourself. So, 3 turns of an attack boost for 2 colors as well as the slasher type. Unfortunately, free spirit is included. It is what it is. It's not the end of the world. Converts all slots, including... Um, Block slots into your own types. I love the translation, Jeopardy. <laughs> when you are a captain, friend captain, or helper captain, change the attack multiplier of strength and int slots to 2.75. Uh, and then when they're unfavorable, they become one times. And then when you are a crewmate, you get a 40% um, heal, lock slots for one turn, and then recover the uh, seal state on the crew for seven turns. So this um, last part here, and recover the seal state, I believe that's bind. You remove Bind for seven turns. Uh, and then become Roger, Rayleigh, and Gaban for three turns. I just want to confirm that this is actually Bind. So yeah, as you can see over here on Twitter, like it's, it, it says it says Bind right there. So, awesome. As a captain, the voyage to the last island, they're going to reduce the ship's special attack by five turns at the start of the quest, increase HP and recovery by 1.25, and then boost the attack of slasher characters by 5.75. All other types will get 5.5 times. So they're, they're a 5.5 rainbow captain, 5.75 to slashers. They reduce damage by 20% and recover 
crew from bind. So you just completely avoid bind as captain. They also make strength and int slots have matching type effects. And when slot strength and int characters hit with a critical potential, reduces the damage reduction and defense up by two turns. This excludes threshold. So very, very nice stuff. You can just basically bypass two turns of defense up, two turns of damage reduction whenever a character with crit hits this. Now, this is very similar to um, Ben Beckman, Lucky Roo. Ben Beckman, Lucky, Lucky Roo, just like, a little bit better because they do all three. Any any character that does all three defensive effects, even if it's a little bit lower than usual, it just has way more versatility. But the fact that you can get around defense up and damage reduction is awesome. The downside is, is as well is that the character needs crit. Now, crit is probably the most popular limit break ability, like especially for slashes, like every motherfucking slasher has, has crit. And uh, with this, like obviously like Ver Shanks and his sort of setups, um, they're going to reap wonders with this particular character. So you can do some pretty fun stuff there. Removing defense up, removing uh, damage reduction is a really, really nice ability. And remember, if you have two uh, Roger Rally Gabans, this is actually working with four turns every turn. So not that you need that much ever, but like it's a pretty interesting ability uh, if you do need to become captain. As a crewmate, you get 100 base attack or base stats, I should say, for slashes. And then at the start of the adventure, reduces the uh, special of slasher characters by one turn. So... This is usually how you know that it's a uh, anniversary exclusive. Most, if not all, anniversary exclusive characters have this ability to reduce one turn of cooldowns at the start of the quest for either the entire crew or for a particular type. So obviously slashes are getting that, which is really, really nice. But this is the crux of the character. This is the, the new mechanic in the Captain Shift mechanic. Now, this character does not have a super swap, but they have this instead. And this particular ability allows you to switch out of the Captain or switch into the captain. This gives a lot more versatility to dual units, creating dual units that can have uh, super types, super classes, super EXs, or it could basically just allow you guys to activate more super classes, super types, super EXs, and all that kind of stuff too. So the captain shift can be used two times per quest. So you'll understand why it can be used two times per quest in a second, um, but obviously you just can't spam this every single time. It's a new ability. And it can be organized in a specific position. And after activating the replacement effect, you can replace the captain. And when you replace it, an additional effect is activated. So if you, Goldie Roger, so obviously Goldie Roger is one part of the dual unit. And then Rayleigh Gaban is the other part. If Goldie Roger is the captain and you swap into Rayleigh Gaban, you can then replace the captain with the character on the middle right for 10 turns. So if you start as Roger, switch into Rayleigh Gaban as your captain you will then um, swap out and your middle right character will become captain. So you obviously need to be, like, be very aware of your positioning. So you could put the position of a very powerful character in that middle right. For 10 turns, you get this. So 10 turns is a long time. It'll pretty much cover you for the entire of a short quest, which most content is nowadays. If Rayleigh Gaban, though, is in the middle right slot and you swap into Roger, you can then swap into the captain. So obviously you want to put Roger Rayleigh Gaban in that sort of middle right slot starters uh Rayleigh and Gaban switch into Roger and then Roger will switch into captain so you can do some really fun stuff there and remember it's for 10 turns so this is a great way of bypassing any content that gives you captain swap this is a really really good way of getting around that so that's where I can see most of its value but obviously if you want to run say Rayleigh and Gaban as a captain and then swap out or even run them as a sub and swap them in to get all of their benefits and then swap them out of captain to have like a really powerful unit. The best one I can think of right now is probably Verse Shanks, having like Verse Shanks as a captain, and then having this unit swap in, activating the super class, and then swapping out and then going back into Verse Shanks. But again, I'll touch on that one before we sort of break down the rest of it. When you do swap, no matter which way you do it, so whether you swap out of the captain or whether you swap into the captain, you're going to reduce your special attack by five. So you're going to immediately give yourself five turns of cooldown, which is pretty crazy. Like, that, that's a pretty strong ability. You also increase the occurrence of strength and int crit by 30% for two turns. This effect will only affect characters that have the crit potential, and it will not increase past 100%. So exactly like what Verse Shanks was doing as a captain, where Verse Shanks gives it for 10 turns, this character is going to give it for two turns, which basically just guarantees 90% of crit characters to actually just guarantee crit. So once you've uh, used this twice... 
the normal switch ability will be activated. So just be mindful too that this character does have a regular switch ability as well. Obviously, once you've already activated a captain swap for 10 turns, you can't just keep binking it and keep chopping and changing. You can only activate this once. So you have to think about how you want to do it uh, and how you want to make it work. Do you want to swap out of Roger? Do you want to swap into Ray the Gabon? Like, like, do you want to start as the captain, move out of captain, and then come back later? Or do you want to start as a sub, become the captain for majority of the fight so you get all the blind removal, and then swap out of the captain later when you don't need the blind removal? It's all going to be very situational for what content comes in front of you. But remember, you can only use this captain shift ability twice. But you're probably thinking like, hey, it's 10 turns. Like, how the fuck are you going to... How are you actually going to use this twice? Well, the character, if we just quickly go down here... Um, the character does have a super class. Now, the super class will allow slashes to become super class, and it can also be activated as a crew member. So you can basically not really worry about being a captain, not being a captain for this. So it doesn't really matter too much um, how you run them. It gives you a lot more options, but at the same time, in my head, it makes a bit more sense if you could only use as a captain, and it would make that captain swap a little bit more illustrious, or captain shift, I should say. The strength and intelligence attribute character's crit damage will be increased by an additional 50% for two turns, and you can completely remove the captain swap effect on the crew. So, like I said, you can swap into captain, utilize their bind ability to just bypass pretty much all bind, and then swap out of captain and go back into the crewmate. But remember, Roger has a very different special to what Rayleigh Gabon is doing. So you could also utilize their special in the sense of being a healer, removing bind that way, or you can utilize them as a captain where you're getting um, a little bit of a different special. So this super class just allows you to utilize them however way you see fit. So the extra 50% additional damage is great because obviously they give you a 100% crit chance. And just like Shanks giving that extra crit chance means that you're going to guarantee a crit. And this turns like a 10% extra damage into say a 15% extra damage. This is kind of good, but at the same time, it basically, it, in my eyes, it kind of just works exactly the same way as something like a 50% resistance would. So I, I don't really know why they wouldn't just give 50%. I, honestly, I think 50% resistance is probably be actually better because um, you're already getting a 10% buff. This extra 5% isn't like stacking on top of that 10% already. But at the same time, look, I might be incorrect. This might just be like a straight 1.5 times buff. If that's the case, then it's pretty much the same as resistance anyway. So um, that is what it is. They do have a last tap as well. Um, they convert their own slot into matching, and this does bypass super block slots as well. Um, and then reduces the resistance of slash attack by 10% for one turn. Remember, this will only affect themselves and gives them 2,500 base attack, which can stack. Now, like, this is just shit. Like, just, like, this, is, this is by far, like, well, the resistance is kind of nice in the matching orb, but anything that just gives base stats is just bad. Like, like the, the chain multiplicative one is kind of like, uh, it's not great, but like, at least you see drastic damage numbers. Base stats is just like, whatever, man. And 2,500 nowadays, like, it should be at least 3,000. Like, so look, it is what it is. As for the uh, Pirate Rumble stuff, we'll get into that in a second, but they do have a swap ability, as I mentioned. They recover special bind by one turn, changes the adjacent slots into matching types, and then reduces slash resistance by 10%. So it's a pretty good swap ability. Obviously, anything that removes special bind by one turn is absolutely amazing. And then getting just free damage in 10% resistance is quite nice too. But when I look at like Kinemon Dendro, for example, it's giving like, what, 25%, I think it is? Like, this should just be way high. Like, this 10% should be just 25%. Just make it exactly like Kinemon Dendro. Um, you can't have an anniversary exclusive in 2024 be worse than a swappability of a character from 2022 that's a regular legend. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Is it just me? Like, is the special vine that much more drastic? Like, it should it should be higher. It should be higher. But at the end of the day, it, it's pretty good. So, the captain ability, the special ability, it does seem pretty good, um, but just not like super power creep like this is a fun character like a very very fun character to use it's a very niche it's very situational and if you look at something like um kobe from last year and now he can sort of just choose someone to swap into captain how that hasn't really taken off except for obviously that one grand voyage fight where you need it this particular ability it's it's just kind of it's interesting i like what they're doing because this time of year it shouldn't be a time for power creep save that for new year's and this could obviously stem into some really really big stuff for new year's so that's that's the way i'm looking at it the character does seem interesting though and uh, we'll head over to twitter and sort of break down and have a look at everything over there as well as for the pirate rumble stuff i haven't actually read their pirate rumble stuff they're super special do they actually have a super special did i do i uh or does it just mean that it's just their regular special 
No, they do. They gave them super special. Interesting. Okay, so this is the first Sugo first character that will have super special. That's awesome. All right, so their regular special level 10 reduces HP of one enemy with the most remaining HP by 50%. Damn, what's the cooldown on this? Hard defense are all enemies for 100% chance of 20 seconds. Deals four times their attack to three enemies with little HP. So this is kind of big because they're going to hit that one enemy for a 50% HP cut, and then that four times could then hit that one character that they hit as well, depending on what the HP values are. Plus, halving defense for 100% chance is great, but, like, we have characters now that can just avoid that. And I imagine, because this character's a dual unit, like, they're really only going to see play on the slasher team, and I could... Oh, it's going to be really interesting to see, like, how this character works instead of Roger and Whitebeard, because, like, Roger and Whitebeard are good, but they are starting to fall off in terms of the slasher meta, and this could be, like, a really nice replacement, not only for the Roger Whitebeard, but also for um, the Giants... Yeah, interesting stuff. The super special, though, this is kind of nuts. Receive enemy pirate festival special move twice. So this is the same as Luffy. What this means is you actually have to receive the enemy special. Like, the enemy can do two specials, but if it doesn't target Roger, Rayleigh, Gabon, this is not going to charge. I actually did, like, a short on the Luffy super special, and, like, Luffy actually has to be hit by it. Whether it's damage, whether it's an effect, whether it's a nerf, doesn't matter what it is, it has to literally affect and like effect to this unit but if you do get it off twice reduce the enemy hp by 60 percent, which is crazy and then the half defense goes up to 30 seconds and then does a 4.5 times attack to three enemies and then gives a hundred percent heal what gives a hundred that's kind of good that's kind of good man because again like you have to take the shots right if you take two shots and you get this off and say, for example, you get very low HP, all of a sudden you bink out this super rumble special, you then just go back to full HP and all of a sudden the enemy basically has to kill you again. So like, that's kind of good. It's not crazy. Like if it was like gives a revive or something like that, that would be way better. But like, that's a really, really nice ability. Again, this super special stuff, it's still like to be desired or to be determined how powerful it is. Cause it all depends on what condition comes in front of it. The rumble festival ability has level oh it does free spirit too oh okay interesting uh boost slasher and free spirit allies attack by six and then increases the physical strength by six as well which i believe is hp and increases the speed of the specials by level three and then does level 10 defense for 60 seconds after the start of battle damn this unit's tanky holy level 10 defense is nuts Wow, okay. And then the GP burst since later. He doesn't have a GP, okay. What? what? No GP burst, no GP leader skill. That's kind of weird. Uh, oh, all right, interesting. Well, that's all the information over on the actual the page. Let's head back to Twitter now. And let's kind of like slide across here. I have zoomed in a lot, so like it's not exactly going to be the best quality. Um, we've kind of broken down everything here. What I do want to see is the rumble stuff as well as the cooldowns and whatnot. So the super class two, you do need to have one of the following characters on the crew. So you need to space to have uh, Odin, Newgate, Crocus, Shanks, Buggy, Dogstomp, Cab Viper, and Ace, as well as then be the dual form. So I believe this is the works in the sense that you have to use the captain shift and then use the special, and then that will activate the super class. That's the way I'm perceiving it anyway. Unless the the captain switch or the captain um shift puts you in the dual form. But I believe you have to use the special for that to actually work. Um and then you have to have one of these characters, man. Verse Shanks is like stonks definitely went up. That's that's kind of nuts. Um, as for the cooldowns, he is on a 15 turn cooldown with limit break expansion. So 16 turns, technically 11, really, because if you use the captain shift, you go into that. Um, and then Roger is a strength character, Rayleigh Gabon are an in character. You have the super class slasher there. As for the um the rumble stuff, what's the cooldown look like? 31 turn cooldown. Okay. That makes sense for the power of their special. 31 turn, 31 seconds is a long time. They have some pretty bulky stats, though. Holy shit. Um, and then what did I want to check in over here in Rumble abilities? Yeah, it's HP. HP upload. So you, you definitely want to run this character in the front, definitely in the middle slot as well. Very, very bulky with some defensive buffs. And then also giving CD reduction is really really good for slashes, man. Like really, really good. Because they're they're like they're going fast anyway. And then obviously with S Hawk and I mean, this character is obviously replacing Roger Whitebeard. So you can do some pretty stuff, pretty fun stuff there. So overall, uh, pretty good character. Um, very like pretty good character nonetheless. But um, like I said, remember this is not a. Do we have the special animation? Yeah. Remember this is not a. 
oh, this is not a time. Bobby. This is not a time for like a crazy power creep. This is more like um, fun, interesting characters, but anniversary exclusives. This is going to be the last time you're able to pull an anniversary exclusive until the global anniversary or the worldwide celebration in February or March. So just be mindful of that. If you guys are missing some of the anniversary exclusives, it might be like a good time to summon. It might be a good time to pick up some of those characters you're missing. Um, oh, wait, we're getting... Oh, damn, we're getting some five stars too? What the hell? All right, cool. So we're getting an Odin and Whitebeard as well as a young Garp and young Sengoku. That's awesome. Well, there's the there's the character to come alongside them to trigger their... um their Super class. So that's super interesting. And as you can see, it does start on the 26th, which will be this Saturday, I believe. Um, and it's only one, one Sugo as well. So like that's that's actually really good for most players. We'll probably do like a should you summon video and stuff like that. So make sure to check, stay tuned to the channel when that comes out. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to build the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.